folks. Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. And today, I'm sure as the title has given it away, we're going to be doing some selective exposure settings. And what I mean by that is we're going to use certain parts of the picture to change the exposure while leaving the other parts untouched. Now, this is actually what we're going to come up with. This is the final picture here. You see we got multiple layers going on, and it looks very, very confusing. But it's very easy to do this. And it gives your pictures uh, more creative feel for, to the uh, overall photo. So let's go ahead and we're going to revert this back to the original image. And we're going to start again. So this is what we're starting with. You can see very much it's it's just, just kind of a bland photo, right? It's overexposed uh, in the back there. It's underexposed in the front. It doesn't really set a whole tone for anything. So I thought I'd play around a little bit today and, and teach you this particular uh, topic. So the first thing we're going to do, as always, is use our Command or Control J, and we're going to duplicate that background layer. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to select the areas that we want to work with for the exposure. Now, I'm going to show you how to use multiple selection tools uh, together. And I think this is something where a lot of people on uh, YouTube that teaches Photoshop, and uh, even through my classes at jtclearning.com, you'll learn to use different tools together to create the effect that you want to uh, to happen. And I think that's very important because a lot of people just use each tool separately and it doesn't make much sense to me. So the first thing we're gonna do is use the rectangle marquee tool. And we're gonna just start at the top here and we're gonna select most of this top really quickly just by using the rectangle marquee tool. Now, if we go down, we don't wanna be in the water, okay? We're only selecting the sky. So go right to the very edge of the water over here to the left. You can see where I'm right on top of it. But we still have all this area of, of sky to deal with over here on the right because it's, it's a marquee, so it's rectangle. So we have to add into our selection. Well, the easiest way to do that now is to grab another selection tool. So grab the quick selection tool. And if you look on the bottom here, we are using the quick selection tool and we are adding to the selection. So all we're going to do now is just kind of come right along this bottom here. Very slowly, very precisely. I just got my left mouse button clicked there and I'm just dragging across there to add the rest of the area. So you see there I use two selection tools together to create the effect that I want to create. I'm also going to make sure that everything is selected across the top here. It looks good. Okay. Now that we have that done, what we're going to do is hit Command or Control J once again. Again, Command and Control J on the keyboard duplicates or, or takes the selection and creates a new layer. And you can see here now where we have that layer of just the sky. And we're going to be working on that in just a bit. The next thing I want to do is click back on layer one, and we're going to grab another selection. This time, I would suggest that you just use the quick selection tool here. Quick selection. And we are just going to grab the sand down here in the front. And the reason I say just use that, because if we use the marquee tool, you'll see where it, it's not, it doesn't make much sense here because of the way the sand is laid out. So I'm just going to grab my quick selection tool and just grab it across here. Now you see there that it goes all the way up the water. And you're like, well, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. So let's hit the subtract button and go right along the top of the sand and subtract. Just like so. And if we lost a little bit here on the left, we'll just add that back in. Just like so. Now we have the sand selected. And again, we're going to do that step once again. Command or Control J. And now you'll see where we not only have the sky available to us, we also have the sand available to us on its own layer. So why is this very important? It's very important because we're isolating the areas that we want to change the exposure. So I want to isolate those areas first so we can change the overall exposure on those areas. Lightroom is very good at exposing an entire photograph, but it's not good at selecting certain areas. And I know you can paint light and stuff on photographs, and I've done that. This is so much quicker, folks. It's so much easier to do this. So the first thing we're going to do in layer three here, and you can rename these. If you simply right-click on you can rename this and call it sand. Obviously, so you know what it is. We can rename layer two. I just right-clicked on it and rename it sky. 
just like so. So that way our layers mean something to us. So click on sand, and then we're gonna go up underneath of create a new fill or adjustment layer. So we're gonna create an adjustment layer. And instead of using brightness and contrast or hue and saturation, I wanna use levels. I just found levels, even though this says saturation, I just found levels to kind of work a little quicker for what I want to do here. Now, here's a common mistake that most people make when they're doing this. They take the levels and they'll just start working with the levels. Watch what happens. I'm going to move this and it increased the levels over everything. Look, the water, uh, the, the, the wave here, the shore being banged up by the water, the sand, all that gets touched and we don't want that to happen. The same with it if I go dark. Watch what happens. The whole thing goes dark. We don't want that to happen. And the reason that's happening is, is because this is connected to the sand, but it's also connected to layer one. So what we need to do is take this mask and we're going to create what's called a, right, it's called a, a grouping. All right, a grouping, and we're going to put those together. We're going to group this with this and create basically a clipping mask. So let's use Command or Control G. So we clipped this with the layer immediately under it, the sand layer. So now when I work on anything in the levels, it's only going to work on the sand. Do you believe it? Well, let's find out what happens. Let's go ahead and move this, uh, move the light bar to the left. And you'll see now we're just the sand. I'm going to overexpose here for a moment. Just the sand is getting touched right? Because we have a clipping mask. We're going to bring it down a little bit here. I just wanted to bring it up a touch. You can play with the contrast. We can bring that back and forth there, the mid-levels, and we can bring the dark up and down, but we're going to leave that all the way over. All right. So you see here now where we already have the sand more exposed. It's more into the photograph, so it should be lit maybe a little bit more. Uh, then you're drawing your eye back in, and we're gonna, this time we're going to draw it back into the darkness, right? I'm going to Take these clothes, the, the clouds, and we're going to drop the exposure, I think, on those to make this a more interesting photograph. So let's click on the sky, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, once again, add an adjustment layer. So we'll go to Levels. And again, do the clipping mask routine with the Command or Control G. And now we're only going to work on the sky. So this time we're going to go from the dark side and we're going to pull it down a little bit. So I'm just going to drop the exposure down that sky. And play with this and see what you like. This is very much a personal choice. However you like it, we're just going to bring it up just enough to let that sun shine through. Uh, you can see the golden coming across the sky there now with the sun uh, beaming across that sky. And it looks like it's getting very, very dark there. So that's a very, very good shot. Okay. Close that. So there is your selective exposure because we selected those certain areas and we exposed only for those areas that we wanted to expose. And they're very different from each other. They're set up very differently from each other and you can, uh, you're can you good to go. So it's a very, very easy edit to do and you can play around with that. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on selective editing here in Photoshop Elements. And if you want to learn even more about Photoshop Elements, you're thinking, man, you know, Jack has to figure it out. And, and he, you know, maybe you want to learn this type, this type of a learning environment where you watch a video and, and learn how to do things on your own by using the videos. Check out jtclearning.com. That's jtclearning.com. Uh, the courses are very inexpensive. There's Photoshop Elements 12, 13, and 14. So I suggest you sign up today. Get over there today. Sign up. As soon as you sign up, folks, you can get started. And once you become a client on the uh, site on JTC Learning, you are always a client on the site. You will you, you can't finish and be knocked off the site. If you finish, you can come back at any time and maybe pick up a point or two later on down the road. So once again, that's jtclearning.com. Sign up today, and I'll see you in there very, very soon. Folks, thanks for watching this video tutorial with Jack's Tech Corner. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye for now.